Right, so this is going to be a walkthrough how to use a life pack, kind of its basic functions, and then going to more of the advanced functions. We're going to talk about the outside, what is on the outside, how does it work in terms of the actual, like physical, where is what and how it works. And then once we've done that, then we will go through the um, how does it work internally and turning it on. So at the front, you see there is paper, with a little lever here that you can pull. And then if you pull out, the paper roll just comes out. There's not much to it. On the um, on my right or on the machine's left is the pads and all those cables. So whether you're going to be looking for um, your pediatric pads or your adult pads or your connector for the pads, that's where you're going to find that. And on the machine's right or my left, I'll be talking to the machine's right. There's all your vital signs, so your BP cuff, SATS probe, and um, ECG lead. At the back, there's obviously a handle, and then these two slots is where the paddles used to go, but we don't use paddles anymore, we use pads. And then at the back here, oh, you will see your batteries, battery one and battery two. You can hot swap, so you can change batteries while it's on, it's not going to turn off. And then at the bottom here is where you can charge it, so you can plug in a charger here, or you can take the batteries out, and you put the batteries into a dock charger, or like something that charges all of the pieces. And interestingly, at the end here, or at the back here, you see there's a little hole here. Um, that is where the capnography or the ETCO2 pump actually pumps air out. So don't ever block this or put something over it or whatever the case. If it's blocked here, the pump will give you problems and stop working. So that's pretty much the external. On the side here, you have at the top, you have your um, ETCO2 um, or your capnography port. Then you have your SATS probe. You have your BP cuff for your NIBP, your non-invasive. Then you have your ECG leads, and then some monitors have an invasive blood pressure monitoring at the bottom here. Depending on the model, depends on what modules you have. Um, some of them don't have the capnography or the SATS probe, they just have the ECG, and some have more. So depending on what you have will depend on what you can see. So on the right here, we have all the buttons. So there's the green button for the on. Then in the gray little square here, that is your defibbing button, so you're selecting energy, charging, and shocking. In the green square is your pacing, so if you're going to be pacing a patient. Um, then we have CPR, which is going to turn on a metronome. Then you have your analyze, that's going to turn on your AED function, your lead, so you can select which lead you're on, um, your lead size to change the amplitude of the lead, syncing is for cardioversion, NIBP is to start the blood pressure, the alarm, so you can turn off or adjust alarms, options so you can go into the options and change things and then events so you can event. There's a home button to go back to the home and a light button that then changes the lights. I'll, I'll show you what that does and there's a 12 lead, if you want to do a 12 lead to transmit um, that if your system has been built to do so you can have a little module that's attached to the back here, and then you can actually transmit your uh, ECGs and your vital signs to other people depending on if your um, service has been set up like this. Code summary is going to print a code summary and printing is just going to start you're printing. So to turn on, hold it down, push the on button. So straight away you can see it tells you how your batteries are doing. So battery one, battery two. It tells you how many joules you set. It gives you a time. It tells you the time. It kind of tells you more information at the bottom. And then on the left you got all these options, which I'll be going through in a moment. So let's just go with the basic. How are we going to use this to, you know, defib? How do we use it to use basic ECG? Let's just go through the ECG part. So this is not a touchscreen. You can't touch it. You can't control it. It's really robust. Um, a touchscreen would just break quite easily. So to control it and to select things, you have to turn this dial. So this is the dial. You can push the dial in to select, and you can rotate. If you want to cancel your selection, you just hit the home button. I've plugged the machine into a rhythm generator, so I can control what rhythms are popping up here, and I've turned it on, and I've plugged it in, and I've turned on the machine, and we're not seeing a rhythm. To explain why is because we have the wrong lead selected. So you have different leads. So on a typical three or four lead ECG, we have lead one, two, three. We have AVR, AVL, and AVF. So with all of these, we can select. So there's lead one, lead two, lead three, AVR, AVL, AVF. These are the four, or these are the six views we have from those four leads. The reason we can't see the, the rhythm being generated is because it is on lead two where actually this has been plugged into the cables, which means it's been plugged into the paddles or the pads. So we need to go to lead and we need to select paddles. See, we now have an ECG. I'm going to scroll down here, I'm going to select, and I'm going to select again, and I'm going to say cascading ECG. That's just so that we can see more of an ECG on the screen. So now that we can see an ECG, we can tell, look, you know, we can see the ECG because we've selected the right lead. If we had the four leads on someone, we could then select all the different kinds of leads. 
So from that point on, we can then start to turn the knob and you can see we can control things. So if I select at the top, if I put it over the heart rate and I select heart rate, it says QRS volume and now there, there is no QRS volume. But if I increase it, we can now hear the rhythm that's being generated. We can turn it off. So let's go through the defib or the shocking. Right, so we've, I've, been, I've put it into a shockable rhythm, so we are in ventricular fibrillation. If we want to charge, all right, so there's just a charge button. You can select the energy. If you select energy, you can push up and down here, or you can just rotate the knob, um, or the dial, sorry, and you can select whatever jewels you want, and then you just select in, and it's done. To charge, you just hit the charge button, and then once it's charged, you can shock. It, it will be quite noisy, so it'll be good for me to speak. And then you can push shock. And it tells you here how many shocks have been given, which is really useful. Let's say you charge by accident, but you actually want to disarm. One, the machine will eventually disarm by itself if you leave it for long enough, or you can just hit the dial button. So if I hit charge, and I'm no longer needing to deliver the shock for whatever reason, you can then just hit the dial button. It says to cancel, push speed dial. You just hit the dial and it disarms. So no defibrillation was given. If we go into AED mode, so this machine can function as an AED mode, it is very noisy, so I'm not gonna be able to speak over it, but I will demonstrate what it does. If you just hit the, hit the button analyze, it jumps into AED mode. Watch what it does. Analyzing now, stand clear. Shock advised. Stand clear. Push shock button. So now we can step in and we can hit the shock button. Start CPR. And all of a sudden the metronome turns on and we have a timer. At the end of the timer, it is going to tell you to reanalyze and then to then it'll tell you whether you need to be shocking or not shocking. Three, two, one, ventilate. Ventilate. So I'm going to just turn off the metronome. You can just hit the CPR button, just because it's difficult to talk, but the metronome is a good idea. Sometimes it can be a bit challenging. If you have it on, you see how it was clicking and then it was going 30 to two, so it was going 30 compressions and then two ventilations. If you do by accidentally go into AED mode, so if you hit analyze by accident, a question that often comes up is how do you get out of AED mode? So all you do is you hit the lead button, so. Check patient. We are currently in AED if mode. No pulse. Analyzing now. So if it starts to Stand analyze, clear. you just hit lead button and it drops it out of AED mode. And now we can do our own shocking. We can choose whatever jewels we want and we can charge and we can shock. We're now out of AED mode. So if you ever by accidentally hit analyze and it does start to do that, then just remember that you can jump out of it as soon as you want. So you can also use the metronome without AED mode. So you can select adult no airway, adult airway, the differences are is that what it's going to do is it means that with a airway, meaning a advanced airway, you can do um, asynchronous compressions and ventilation. So it's just going to keep on with the metronome, which is really great.